Okay, so welcome to part one uh, of this series. Um, in this part, as usual, I'm just going to be explaining the file structure um, and then we're going to get on to making the database and basically coding the page I showed you before. Um, this probably will be the last part as well, hopefully anyway, uh, because there's really not very much to this. We're only recreating two functions and they're both quite simple. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. Um, so, file structure. This list.php file is the page that I had open in my browser previously. I've still got it open in my browser, and I'll show you that in a minute. Um, so this is like the page. This is the folder where all the pages go. We're looking at the root of the system we're working with at the moment as well. Um, so this is basically the same system, same file structure that I always use for these videos, and in sort of projects as well. Um, so this core folder is sort of contains like the back end of the system. Um, so we have this init file, again we always have, and this ink folder. The init file sort of sets up the system, um, like it would start the session if we were using a session, connect to the database, and then it will include any backend files that we need for this page. Uh, which, gen which tends to be all of them really, because that's just sort of easier. Um, so this ink folder, like I said a minute ago, it contains any backend files. And because we're working with a sort of products list page, um, I've called this products and we're just going to create two functions um, so for example the first function we'll be creating is fetch products and what that will do is fetch a full list of all the products in the table sorted by their rating so that's basically what we're doing um, and that's why it's called products and not like rating or whatever um, so that's basically it for the folder structure like I said it is basically what I do all the time so if there are any problems there it might make a bit more sense to watch some of my older videos because um, I'd probably explain it in a bit more detail there because I'm getting bored of saying it. Uh, and also there's not much point in me explaining it over and over again for the people that have been sort of following these for a while now. So yeah, that's that. Um, so moving on to the database. Um, yeah, sorry. Okay, moving on to the database. Uh, I have this empty database at the moment and I'm just going to create a new table on it and explain uh, sort of values that I choose. So I'm going to create this table called products, like so, and it's going to have four fields, and I'm just going to hit go. Um, and now we need to choose these fields, so the first one is going to be like a unique number that identifies the, that row. So that's just like a standard auto increment ID, so I'm just going to call that product ID. The second column is going to be um, the name of the product, so this is going to be like a string just the name of the product basically. Um, and the next column is going to be like the number of positive votes, like sort of the rating I guess, but I'm just going to call this product votes. And finally we need to add product added, um, which is a sort of timestamp, which is when the product was added to the database. Remember in the previous part I mentioned that we want to stop like um, older products, older items in the database being sort of shown at the top just because they have more votes uh, doesn't necessarily mean they're the most popular so by adding this product added and logging the time that the product was added we can um, sort of sort by the number of votes per hour effectively uh, and that will give you a sort of more accurate representation of which product is more popular um, so yeah that's basically that um, so now moving on to the data types. The type for the product ID is an integer, int. Uh, the name, we're going to set varchar, and the other two are also ints, because timestamps are the number of seconds since that date that I always forget. Um, so yeah, that's why we haven't specified anything else for that. Um, so the length, next, um, we are going to set the length for the product ID to 6, uh, because you're not very likely to have more than that many products. Uh, a length of six allows basically six nines as the maximum value because uh, the largest number you can have that's six digits. Um, so yeah, if you do have more products than that, then feel free to increase this value, but six will do basically. I'm only, I'm only inserting four. I could really type one here, but that wouldn't be very good. Um, so the product name, we're going to set to length of 64. Again, this is probably a little bit too long, um, but you can shorten this or sort of change it to suit your data. Uh, product votes are going to set the same six because you're not that likely to have um, that many votes but it'd be nice to be able to account for having that many votes so you could increase this if you want to. 
um, and product added is a timestamp and they are always of length 10 or at least will be for quite some time so now scrolling across one last thing we need to do is set the primary index for the product ID column and set it to be auto incrementing what this means is for every new row that is inserted if no value is specified for this product ID column um, the MySQL server will just generate one uh, dynamically and that's basically it so you'll get like an incrementing number in that column so what we do now is just hit save and that's saved the table uh, obviously we're going to be needing some um, sort of data in this table to be testing with and because you don't want to watch me just typing four things in with the insert tab I have the SQL here so what I'm going to do is just copy this and run it in phpMyAdmin with the SQL tab like so and what this should do if I've made any typos which I haven't apparently or oh, have undeclared variable uh, what? Oh, okay I typed it okay there we go that's now inserted four rows I pasted wrong I failed to paste there you go um, so what that's done it, ha it has inserted four rows so now we have this sort of data of the four items that you saw in part one and they've all as well been inserted with the same timestamp um, I might change that later to demonstrate the sort of votes per hour type system that I had in mind but maybe not we'll see uh, and also all the votes are set to zero so what we need to do now is get on with the actual code so I can go back to my text editor and um, sort of explain the files. So this list.php file, like I said, is going to be the page. At the moment it doesn't really do anything except it includes this init file. Now this init file I have actually got the code already written in, which is not not what I normally do, but I thought that I've probably done this so many times now I'm getting a bit sick of it. Uh, so instead of actually typing this out, I'm just going to very briefly go over what's actually happening. So we've got these four lines of PHP code here. The first one is the MySQL connect function which, oh god, highlighting, there, the MySQL connect function, which is just connecting to the database. That's obviously required if you want to work with the database. You need to have an open connection to it. Uh, the next thing we need to tell the database server which um, actual database we want to work with. So we use the MySQL select DB function. And if you remember from phpMyAdmin, the database was called rating system. These next two lines are uh, sort of, they complement each other. Um, this first line, path equals dir name dir name file, is getting the um, full server path to the core folder, so the folder that this init file is ad actually in. And then we're using this path to include the products backend file, which is in the inc folder. Um, so I could like output this path, and I think I've done that in previous videos, so I'm not going to be doing that again. All you need to know is that this init file is connecting to the database and then including the backend file. Uh, and this backend file is what we're mainly going to be working with. And at the moment, as you can see, it's currently completely blank. So the first actual code that we need to do is something that will just list the products. Not ordered by the rating anyway. All we're going to do is create a fetch products function. And then we're going to use that here to output each product's name. So we're going to go back to our backend file. I'm going to define a new function using this function keyword. And the function is going to be called fetch products, like so. And what this function needs to do is query the database and get any information from it um, that we need. So what we're going to do is define an SQL variable. And this is going to be the actual SQL code that we run. And the SQL that we actually are going to run is select and what we're going to be selecting is the product ID product product ID and the product name and we're selecting from uh, the products table so products like so so that all this will do is get every row from that table what we need to do now is actually run this query so we're going to define this new variable called result this can be equal to MySQL query of the SQL variable. So what this is doing is like passing this entire string into this MySQL query function. And that will perform the SQL query and return the results. Then we need to process the, 
process this result and return uh, something that like developers people can use in their code. In this case, it's our code, but yeah. Um, so what we're going to do is define a array that we're going to return called products. It's going to be equal to a new um, wait, learn to type. There we go, <laughs> a new array. So that all that will do is create a products variable that is an empty array. And then we need to loop over the query results and add to the products array for every loop. So what I'm going to do is use a while loop here. So while, again, I've covered this before, so I'm not going to explain too much what's going on. So what we want to do is while row equals MySQL fetch a sock of the result, uh, result query. And while that is not equal to false, because remember once the query uh, once this function gets to the end of the table, it will uh, return false, and that will stop the loop, and stop adding things to the array, and so on. So what we want to do is add the add the product that we're getting to the products array. So we can do that like this. To add to an array, you just start with the sort of variable name, so products. All right, yeah, and then you have two square brackets with nothing in them, and you set that equal to. Uh, the value you want to add. So in this case it's row product name. And what this will do is add the product name to the end of the array. However, we do not want to just add the thing to the end of the array, the array because we also need the product ID. So it sort of makes sense to um, you can, I mean, sorry, you can specify the key if you want to, leaving out leaving it out completely with these two square brackets with nothing in between because uh, in between them is where you would normally specify the key leaving it out just makes um, PHP generate one automatically so what you can do is specify that value so because we selected the product ID as well we can use that here so we can just do row product ID and what that will do is create an array which has the product ID as the key and the product name as the value and obviously we just need to return this array, so we just do return return products and that's basically that function complete. The last thing that needs to be done is a comment to tell you what it does when you come back to this file later on. So what it does is it fetches an array of all of the uh, of the products in the table int he table fixed good. So now if we go to our list page, we can use this function to create a list of products. So back going back here, we can just use it in a for each loop because it returns an array. We just do for each fetch products as product. Uh, I do have a video on for each loops, so if you're not really sure how these work, then you should go you should or can go and watch that. So inside this for each loop, we can just output the name. Um, but I'm just going to be outputting it in a paragraph tag just to make it look a bit nicer. So I'm going to do echo p and p, and in here we're just going to have the product variable, like so. And if we go back to our browser now and go back to our list page and just hit reload, you can see we get this list of four products. So this is sort of what we started with. And the next thing we need to do is obviously add the links. So I'm going to do that now, uh, and then we'll end this part because we're getting quite close to the 15 minute mark and well, I can upload longer videos now, but I don't really like to. 15 minutes will do. Um, there's a bit more to cover as well, so it'd end up being quite long. So anyway, uh, let's go back to the page and add the um, links. So instead of just echoing these HTML tags, what I'm going to do is just delete this, close the PHP block, delete this, delete this ending line, and then reopen the PHP block down there. I'm going to bring this down and the par other paragraph tag down as well. Obviously at the moment this will just output the actual variable because that's not inside PHP so just reloading the page will just get product 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 uh, which is obviously not what we want. We need to actually output this. So what we can do is add PHP tags here, echo product, close PHP tags again, reload, we get the product names. So that's effectively the set doing the exact same thing, uh, except now it sort of makes it a bit easier to add HTML, especially because with my editor, 
uh, HTML is highlighted as HTML outside of PHP tags. So that's sort of generally why I do it. Uh, it's not really considered good practice to echo like massive chunks of HTML either. Um, so what I'm going to do is just add the two link tags here. So A for link anchor href equals, and I'll come back and fill that in in a moment. And I'm just going to have this as the up link, and then I'm going to copy this down and have this as the down link. So this should add an up and a down, sort of link or button. Obviously, you'd style these a bit nicer than I will be doing, but just for the purposes of this, this should demonstrate how the back end works. And what we are going to be linking to is a question mark because we're going to be using the get variable system type thing here. Uh, I'm going to set vote equal to up, and we're also going to be passing the product ID. So we're going to set ID equal to something. And that something is going to be another PHP variable, which you haven't defined yet, um, because remember the products array that was returned from this fetch products function used the product ID as the key and the name as the value. So here, instead of just doing for each item of the array value, you can do as key points to the value. Uh, but because this isn't key isn't very descriptive of the name, we change key to ID and then come down here and do echo ID. Again, if I do have a video on for, for each loops, so you can watch that if you're not really sure what's going on. Uh, so that's basically that. So I'm going to copy this href bit down as well and just change up to down, like so. Now reloading the page again gives up and down links. If I just hover over them with my mouse, you can see down at the bottom it says the link is list.php question mark vote equals up and id equals one if I move to the down link there's vote equals down move to the next link down vote equals down and id is two so the id is basically the product id from the table so yeah that's basically that and I think I'm going to end this here and the next part I'll show you how to make things happen when these are clicked instead of at the moment it just does basically nothing Okay, so thanks for watching and join me in part two.